Here we are with day three, or should I say episode three, because it's not really three days. So episode three of the Porsche IMS bearing clutch rear main seal flywheel replacement project. It just started out as an IMS replacement project, but you know how these things go. Anyway, I was away for four or five days. Um, with some successful racing at Summit Point Motorsports Park with the SCCA. Came back and there was a big box delivered for me. And that big box seems to contain an awful lot of air and not a lot else. But at the bottom of the box was Luke or Luke Innovation Clutches. Except it's not a clutch. It's my replacement dual mass flywheel and I'll take the other one off. This is difficult to do with one hand but because there's very little movement in it which is great. I got the flywheel and the bolts but no clutch or clutch housing. I think it was a clutch kit that I ordered. There should be a release bearing and uh, now the pilot bearing is already in the, the flywheel so I don't need that. Anyway, I uh, just checked online and they haven't shipped the other parts yet. Plus, there should be a big box from LN Engineering. And I keep getting emails saying it's going to be delivered tomorrow. And it's tomorrow. And it's tomorrow. But it is tomorrow. And I think the clutch is coming on the day after tomorrow. So we should be good. My T55 Torx bit arrived while I was away as well. So... <sighs> today's job, pretty much the only thing I can do is let's see if we can get the uh, flywheel bolts out with this and remove the old flywheel and compare it with the new one. Hopefully with the trusty tool I can remove these without having to uh, fix the flywheel down. So let's have a go at these. One, yes. Top tip here, leave one of these bolts in so this whole thing doesn't fall on your, on your head. These bolts are TTY or torque to yield bolts. So they are single use. The idea is, you fit these to the specified torque and then turn them a further 120 degrees and they stretch. So this actually came undone really easily. I was just able to pry it off with my hand. So let's take this last bolt out. There we go. Oh, we got a leaky rear main seal. Yeah, so here you can see the rear main seal is, is quite wet, so, uh, so that's good. We'll be replacing that. It just looks a little dirty around. This is the IMS bearing. We have to take these out um, in order to release that cover. But first of all, we need to lock the engine down. Oh, set it top dead center, lock it down, and we need to release the chain tensioners. There's one there and one here and there is a third one at the front but typically you can get away just with doing those two and what we need to do is is we don't need to take this cap off. These are the the cam covers. There's one there and there's one underneath so you need to pry that out and then you can lock the cam cover there, the cam there. And then there's another one at the front of the engine that you get at through the uh, the passenger compartment and uh, so we set the car at top dead center lock everything down and then in theory it should be safe to take the tensioners out and it's not going to to jump and then when we put it all back together again we'll turn the engine over by hand a couple of revolutions just to make sure nothing's hitting that's the scary bit so just to give you an idea of the difference between a good dual mass flywheel and a not so good 
dual mass flywheel. This is the new one, this is the one I've just taken off. There should be a little bit of movement, and I'm not sure if you can even see how little movement there is there, but that is as much movement as I can get out of the new one. So you can see it's teeny tiny. Look at this one. So the idea of the dual mass flywheel is that there's two separate masses that will move somewhat independently with springs in between and they absorb vibration and absorb torque and all that kind of stuff. Now there is a test uh, on how you do this. I've actually put a yellow mark on here and the idea is that you should only have 15 millimeters of movement in each direction. So, and I've kind of kind of centered this, but let's turn this and let's see. That's where it is on that side. And let's move it over this side. And that's where I'm there. This is kind of, by the looks of it, it's right at the limit. And let's have a measure. That is 25 millimeters on that side and 15 on that side. So you know, combined, we've got 40 millimeters of movement. It should only be 30. And, and you can see this is real sloppy. There's no spring to it. And this thing just, just moves. Whereas the, the other one would barely move. So we've taken it out anyway and uh, you can see from the surface that it, it's, it's quite badly burned, uh, scorched in places. So this is, this is an X flywheel. I can't do a whole lot more today. Um, what I will do is I can, I can set the engine to top dead, top dead center, which means uh, dropping the car down a little bit so I can get inside, pull out the cover uh, on the inside and there is actually a little teardrop shaped hole um, in the pulley on the front and you can put in a, I think it's a 5 16th drill bit. There's actually something that comes with the, uh, the IMS installation kit, um, but I can get that set up at least and it'd be ready to install the new bearing once it comes. So let's do that. An added bonus in this car, I've just slid the seats forward and found there's M&Ms. Wonder how old they are. There's a blue one. And if you prefer red, there's a red one. Bargain. I've popped off the carpeting here um, to reveal the, the engine access plate. The carpeting just lifts off. So there are four of these tabs securing that back carpet down. These look like they pop off and I did actually pop a couple of them off, but they actually just unscrew off the um, off the pins there and then you can just lift the carpet out and that reveals the engine access panel we'll pull that off um, looks like they are one two three four five six seven and I'm guessing those are m10 bolts and then let's have a look at what's behind there looks like I lied there's also these two M10 nuts to take off and then the panel will come away. Here we have the engine in all its glory. There are the other cam covers. You can just see them in green down there. So I need to take the bottom one out and then I'll lock you with the locking tool that comes with the kit. That one there is the teardropped shape hole to bring the engine to top dead center. So I put a drill bit in there. That's not a 5 16th one, but that's it's more or less on the spot and you can see also there's a little notch on the pulley which I've marked with yellow paint I also managed to mark just about everything else with yellow paint but that notch has to line up with this mark and that says something along the lines of top dead center cylinder number one that is a 24 millimeter bolt on the main pulley and uh, I didn't have to take the spark plugs out to be able to turn the engine. And, uh, but I probably will take the plugs out just to check how they are and uh, probably replace them. Anyway, it all looks pretty clean back here. I'm quite pleased with that. Here you can see I popped out 
the cover you just you can just stick a screwdriver through the center because it's it's actually a metal cover but there's a hole in the middle but you can see that those two slots are in fact vertical and um that means that the engine is at top dead center as soon as i get the kit from ln engineering i'll be able to lock that up hopefully lock the other one hopefully it gives me two sets of tools even though they say you only need to do one side i would like to lock both sides this is the cam cover on the back of the engine and it's actually really difficult to get to that there's no there's no room to get at it so uh i think i'm gonna have to manufacture a pick uh with a right angle in it to get that out Looks like I spoke too soon. I was able to get it out from above with a screwdriver. That's great. So both are out. Um, I can't actually see in there to see if it's uh, vertical, but if the other one is, this one should be. So same thing, we'll put the locking tool in place. Uh, we'll make sure the crank is locked down with the proper tool instead of that drill bit that I've put in there. And then we'll be able to undo the chain tensioners. That will be for tomorrow, which I'll include in today's video. So it'll actually, even though it'll be day four, it'll still be day three, if you follow. See you then. Here we are, and it's a couple of days later, and I've received another care package. Yes, I got the bearing from LN Engineering. And in their care package, they sent me lots of peanuts. In addition to the peanuts, I got new torque to yield bolts for the flywheel, replacement camshaft plugs and uh, crush washers for the tensioners. This is the rear main seal and installation tool. I got a clutch centering tool. The um, IMS bearing retrofit, which is uh, a dual row ceramic um, bearing, and uh, the new top cover plate, and the IMS Pro toolkit, which has everything you need for installation. This is the locking tool for the crankshaft. This is the cam locking tool that I'll need to use because I have a five chain engine, I hope. Um, I'm actually going to make another one of these from this template so that I can lock both sets of cams. This is, along with this and these adapters, is to withdraw the bearing and this is to insert the new one. A lot of good kit. And I should be getting my new clutch kit today which has the, the clutch, the cover, the release bearing and anything else I need. We are good to go. All I've got to do is move this out of the way, drop the Porsche down and uh, start to lock everything in place. That is a really tight fit to get in there. I actually had to cut down a drill bit, uh, an eight millimeter drill bit or a five sixteenth drill bit to be able to line up the holes to then be able to get that tool in there because it catches against this bit of bulkhead that you can see on the left. But you can see here that the marks are lined up. That tool is all the way in and that engine is not gonna turn over. I've made a duplicate locking tool because you only get one in the kit using this as a template. This is the original. This is the one I just knocked up quickly out of a piece of scrap 1 8 steel. Should be enough to keep the cams in place. We fit these on the exhaust cams, which are the lower ones, on each side. One at the front of the engine, one at the back of the engine. Here we are looking straight up at the, the end of the cams. The tool just clips in place, or doesn't even clip, it just goes into the slot in the end of the, the cam. And then we can use one of the bolts, I think a six millimeter from the clutch cover to snug that down. And that will stop the cam from moving at all once we take the chain tensioners off. So we'll just 
tighten that up if I can get at it. There you go, nice and snug. And make sure that that is incorrectly and everything's lined up. There we can see the front exhaust cam locked down, so everything is buttoned down now. Nothing should move, so we can undo the chain tensioners.